Hey folks, Kevin Wagner here again. This time I'm going to be talking about my 1990 Tuffy Bassa Murata rebuild. We're going to be talking about the flooring portion. The demolition is done. So now we're going to start talking about what materials we used to start to rebuild the, the boat and why we did it that way. Let's talk about some of those before we go to the pictures. So first of all, I got asked a lot is what type of plywood did I use? You can use marine grade or regular ply. I'm um, quite frankly, you're going to encapsulate it. I chose to use the West Marine epoxy system. Uh, it's an epoxy resin uh, that you can either use by itself or in conjunction with a fiberglass cloth. Fiberglass cloth is what gives it its structural rigidity um, or some other type of um, materials that you're going to see that I used as well. Um, I chose to use a fairly good grade ply. And I'm going to tell you a couple of the reasons why I use ply over marine grade. First of all, marine grade is very heavy. Um, I should have done my numbers, but if I recall right, marine grade is about twice and sometimes even more than two and a half times heavier than a standard sheet of ply. You don't need that plywood in your boat. If you are going to use, uh, let's take the example of uh, three sheets of plywood, let's say five sheets of plywood in your boat, and each piece of marine grade ply weighs 50 more pounds, five pieces of ply, that's a 250 pound person you've got sitting in your boat each and every time you go out fishing. Next, um, the cost. Marine grade ply is expensive. Third, marine grade ply has a lot of chemicals in it. I'm going to encapsulate it in epoxy. Why do I need all those chemicals in my boat? Fourth, marine grade ply also still does deteriorate. With a good epoxy encapsulating that wood, it's going to break down slower than the marine grade plywood would. Uh, now, there's people that are going to debate that subject, so I'm not telling you it's an end-all, but in my research, an epoxy-coated plywood is going to last longer than marine grade plywood. Those are the primary reasons um, that I went with a good grade ply and why I used three-quarter. My floor isn't huge. I have stringer space pretty, pretty uh, close together. So I could have went with a five eighths, but I did go with three quarters. All right. And in my transom, I used two sandwiched three quarters. Um, next, you can use a polyester based resin or an epoxy based resin. I use an epoxy based resin. It costs more. It has a little bit more flexibility. Um, and uh, I like what it does. I've uh, used epoxy-based resins when I refinish canoes. The reason I use an epoxy-based resin in refinishing canoes is because they have flexibility. If you use a polyester-based resin in a canoe, they're going to crack. So uh, it does cost more. Bottom line, it costs significantly more to use a West Marine system, but it's. I liked what I use. I've got three different hardeners. I've got a 105, 106, and 107. They're used for different temperature bases. You need to know what your temperature is. If it's too hot, the minute you mix that stuff up, it'll puff up and smoke. It'll literally burn your hands while you're holding the cup. If it is too cold, it will never set up. It will never kick, they call it. You know, when you mix it together, you need to mix it together very good. Do not skimp on how you mix. Put in your mixture of your resin, then put in your hardener and mix it nice and completely for a minute. And don't stop. Don't take a shortcut. Don't look down in and say, it looks like it's mixed good. Don't do it. Don't cheat. This is not the part to cheat. So you get it mixed. You put a good coat on. Now, the one thing that a polyester resin does is a polyester resin wets in a fiberglass cloth better. Uh, that being said, there is some debate about how well the two play together. Um, and a, a epoxy resin will pretty much, though, adhere to pretty much anything. Um, and an epoxy resin, in my research, will stand on its own better than a polyester-based resin. And for my use, I want to use that resin 
without cloth to encapsulate my product. So I feel more comfortable with it. Later on, we're going to see a picture of what that resin looks like when it sets up. All right, let's jump to the pictures. Now we're to the bottom of the boat. All right, here's the bottom of my boat. Um, I did leave the existing foam in there and I filled in some of these other spots. I don't have any good pictures of that, but I did fill in some of the other spots. Uh, you can see that I put nailer plates in here. The reason being is it's going to be hard for me to put the board on there and find, screw these down. You can see that in the past, they pretty much missed the board quite a bit and they rusted out. We're using stainless screws and we use these pieces of uh, two by four. We just put these nailers in and uh, we measured everything out. Another thing I want you to notice in here is that I have PVC in here to run my wiring. I have a friend that uh, worked building wiring fire trucks for 40 years. He's also an avid fisherman. He suggested I use six gauge tinned wire. I had um, two big long strips that I ran from the back of the boat and the batteries all the way to the bow of the boat. We run more electricity through our boats than our parents houses had running through them. We have computers, those locators that we use, those trolling motors that we use, they all use a lot of power. And one of the biggest challenges to those locators and trolling motors running effectively is the ability to carry that power from the batteries to those sources. So I use six gauge tinned wire. Tinned wire is good in a wet environment. I also ran them through this PVC so it'd be easy for me to fish them through and back. Um, you can see now that uh, those rotted two by fours that were there before, I've got some new ones in here. You can see that I don't use one straight one. Uh, there's a lot of compound angles and it was easier for me to get the affected level that I wanted to hit um, by doing it this way than the other. You can see that I dry fitted. I screwed all my boards in and then I unscrewed them and then I re-epoxied everything. Uh, I'm big on dry fitting. All right, so that's my first one here. So now let's get to my next picture. Here's what it looks like with the, na the nailing cleats and screw cleats in with my two by fours. Uh, you can see you can see by the glossy sh finish on here that all these things have been um, epoxied many times. The PVC I put in uh, a silica um, into my resin, which created a type of peanut butter to help keep this bound connected to the floor. I use these braces just to keep that PVC down the middle. So that's what you see in this picture here. You can see I've got my foam back on here. It's the best place to store it. And that is what's going to be supporting my bunks when they come in. You can see under here is my pumps. We did replace all the pumps. I don't know if I have much for videos on that, but I'll try to get that in here. All right, let's go to my next picture. Here I am epoxying my um, screw plates, nailer plates. Here's some of the tools of the trade. Uh, some of the foam brushes, the mixing cups. Um, there's the screw plates in just a top view. Here's the colloidal silica that I used um, to make my peanut butter, mayonnaise, that type of thing. This is my resin and this is my hardener. And you can see you get a really nice, clean, uh, shiny finish when that's done. This is my peanut butter and that silica that's in there. Um, I put those boards down and this is how I attach them. I did not use fiberglass on these. Um, I was in there kicking and hammering away on them. I couldn't get them to move afterwards. Here is uh, the first part you're dry fitting, but some of the tools of the trade, you need a measuring tape. I, I found a ruler was good, a speed square. And this little device here is when you do use uh, fiberglass cloth with resin, you do want to roll it out. The thinner your liquid resin is in your fiberglass cloth, the better you are. Also, you do not want air bubbles. That is the enemy of a good resin. Here we are dry fitting again. You can see that we put, uh, basically we snapped a line. We, draw a line. we drew a line where all of the stringers were. And we also, although the transom is not attached here, we did clamp it in so we knew where this board needed to be underneath. 
here you can see the boards you can see this is probably at least their third or fourth coat when you put your flooring boards in what you want to do is you want to make sure the underside has a lot of good coatings on because you're not going to get back at it again later here you can see all the different boards again uh, there's my hardener or that's my that's my silica my colloidal silica there um, you saw that stuff before this is probably my final shiny coat here's the screw guns some of the nailer plates that we used um, <laughs> we do have a demolition bar there I'm not going to tell you why we do have a sanding tool um, once we put these boards the floorboards in I did epoxy over made sure all the screw holes were you know countersunk almost they're flush with the board then epoxied over all of them so they had a good seal and then around the outside edges i sprayed put spray foam in as you could see before there's a lot of big hollow spots under there i didn't want to waste a lot of material in resins to go down in there so i first put in uh, spray foam and i put you got to get the closed cell spray foam uh, you don't want to get open cell spray foam but I did get a closed cell spray foam in there to, to fill in those those hole those empty spaces. Um, you can never have too much flotation in a boat. And then what we did is we did uh, cut those with a knife and sand them down. And then I did put my resins over them. <clears throat> Here you can see those edges. Now what I did is I put a board to the back. I put a board to the front, and then I put this stronger two by two in the middle. I did that for a reason is that is underneath the seat and I just thought that extra piece of support in the middle uh, would be good. My discretion. <clears throat> Once that's done now um, all the screw holes are have been epoxied over and you've got to let them dry. Everything I'm telling you here there's a huge amount of drying time in between. So start thinking of once you put on your resins, you may have two, four, five, 10, 12 hours of wait time in between. So be working on your next projects. You're, you're cutting, you're measuring, you're getting your supplies. This is fiberglass cloth. First, I dry fit it, lay it down, and then I resin it in. Once you resin it in, it becomes almost invisible. And I put down, I think on my seams, I think I put three different coats on. And then I put one complete coat of uh, epoxy resin over everything again. And you can see here, there was much messier. I knew it was going to be covered up with carpet. But I did. I do sand this down, though, afterwards. And this is the the resin. Now, I make that more of like a mayonnaise makeup, meaning... Think of the consistency of mayonnaise. Peanut butter is very thick. Mayonnaise is somewhere in between. And you use a little fillet knife. It is rounded. It looks like a popsicle stick. It's rounded at the end. And uh, you just draw that along this these angles, and it pushes all that in, and it uh, cuts off your edges. It works really nice. And it's. I think I had about four of them, and you can buy those. Again, I bought most of my stuff. The, the West Marine Epoxy and West Marine are not the same company. They just happen to have the same name. But I did use West Marine to get a lot of my stuff simply because the store is close by. Um, now here, uh, you're going to see more of a finished product. You can see that everything now is foamed in, resined in, glassed in, and an epoxy coat. Uh, you can see, you can't even see the seams now when everything is wetted in. It always gets that honey color when it's finished. We did not do this here because we're going to be building our bunks here. Um, and it looks like at this point in time, I do have my transom. And that's going to be another video. I'm going to show you how we did that and the timing of it. <clears throat> here you can see it from the front. Now, this is another thing you need to do. You need to look and contemplate dry fit, look, think, sit, have a beer or a Dr. Pepper or a glass of water or whatever it helps you think. Um, there is no perfect way to do this, but if you think it through, uh, it makes it a lot easier for your finished product. Anyways, this is my flooring base. I'm going to get to my bunks and my transom next. The next video I'll do will be on transoms. 
thank you. Have a great day. If you want to get a hold of me, um, I will put a link to the uh, I'll, I'll put a link to the page, and then you can just hit me with Messenger, folks. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Let me get over here. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get a hold of me. I enjoy doing this. Have a good day.